Modern Deep House and Melodic Techno. And the labels like Afterlife is known for their deep and lush tom grooves. Today, I will be guiding you through theory and creation of these tom grooves. Before we start creating the toms, we really need to understand the really simple theory behind the drum beats. And the first concept that we are taking a look at is called strong beats. If we take a look at the four to the floor dance music, the strong beats are basically the parts where we have our kicks. It will sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The strongest beat in a, in a bar is the first one, the second strongest is the third one, and the second and fourth is relatively less strong. But it doesn't really matter in the concept of tom creation, we will count all the kick hit as a strong beat. And the second concept on and off beat. If we take a look at a simple kick and hat loop, the kick hits are on beats, the strong beats, and the hat beats will be the off beats. And the way you count on and off beat is one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all these ends will be your offbeat sounds. Those offbeats are also weak beats. And the final concept is down and up beat. Often confused with the on and off beat, down beat basically means the first beat in your bar. In this case, because we more or less always have the kick, our down beat will be kick it. And up beat by definition is the last beat of the previous bar. So if we come back to our kick and hat example, our down beat will be the first hit in our bar and our up beat will be the last hit in our bar, which is a tom sound. So if you take a listen. The reason I bring up beat is they are extremely important for the syncopation of the tom sounds. And we will go into a bit detail during this video. All right, the first thing that we need is of course a kick. Pretty cool kick coming from my analog drum samples. It's beefy and dark together with toms. You don't want a kick that's very bright and heavy hitting. I'm gonna actually create one more MIDI track to like highlight one thing. So those strong beats are the places that we don't actually want our toms. Hitting the kick and the tom will be clutter the mix and it will really sound awful. These areas that are not available for using the tom. Now, the first thing that we should be doing is separating the low toms, which we will use as a replacement for the sub bass kind of, from the high toms, which will be used for creating the melody and continuation. Low tom, I'm gonna go for my, again, unlock drum samples. I think this one is good for high tom, and this one will be nice for the low tom. Let's put it into a sampler or simpler, doesn't really matter that much. Take a look at the key of the tom. I always tag the key, so we are on the E. We need to put these three half semitones down to get to the C so that we can play like an instrument afterwards. I will build a track in A minor. I'm gonna go A. This is too high. This is just perfect. Bass and dark, right? This area we cannot use. Let's use something like this. I'm not gonna make it more complicated than this for now because we need to do something else, which is the high toms. Let's bring it in. It do exactly the same thing. This time it's C-sharp, control, half semitone down, and a little bit EQing to make it slightly darker. When we are dealing with the high pitch notes, it's really important to deal with our upbeats. Upbeats is here, downbeat is here. And also at the end of each quarter bar is a good point, creating a bit closure to our loops, or in some case creating tension and drama. And then maybe we go up somewhere, Created tension, dun 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 dun. So this is really important. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, extend, and play a little bit with the pattern so that we have something a bit more interesting. We are really keeping more or less the same pattern, but slightly exaggerated. Here we are doing these two ups here. Again, it really depends on what you are going for. You can see that I played around a bit free here, but that's really up to your personal choice. In step four, we will introduce a bit of groove. I will be lazy at the moment. I'm just gonna bring something from Groove Library. Let's pick something like this, but I'm gonna really decrease the timing at a bit random, decrease the velocity. It's not that much of change. This here, we have moved a bit up and down, the length a bit change. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one as well. A little bit off feel. 
Step number five is introducing an axillary percussion, just to glue everything together. I especially like to use on the upbeats here and there, introduce a drum rack, and then I will just go to my drum samples, go to percussions and pick random sounds really. Because now everything is clean, we can use these percussions to give us a room feel. In this case, I'm actually gonna use just a channel reverb with quite a bit of wet, and I'm gonna make it really dark, something like this, right? Just introduce another EQ, it's just easier to cover things up like this. Sound doesn't matter that much, we just want to feel the room. Just to hit the things randomly until you find some, you, you figure out something. Do you see how much the room is enhanced or like how much the space enhanced? Introducing a sub bass or color bass. We kind of have enough low end tone, so I'm gonna avoid sub bass. Instead, to use a bass to give us a bit more like a vibey feel. I find this preset, having a bass that spread a bit around the stereo field really enhances again the whole experience. right together you see how gorgeous everything starts to sound like but things sound a bit mushy because we have a bass sound here and it's not really reacting our toms and kicks the first thing the easiest one so i change the kick this is a small sidechain but i want more aggressive sidechain especially on the bass area here we can make a dynamic EQ in Ableton. So what I'm going to do, ML of follower to the kick. So we're going to map this to the gain of here. And what you need to do is put it into 50-50 here, so that it's up and down. And then we are going to play the scale to the minus so that it ducks when the kick hits. Something like this. But I also want this to react to our toms, especially the low toms, what I'm going to do Duplicate this one more time, and this time we're gonna sidechain from the low toms. Again, you can do the same thing with the low toms to the bass, but for now it will be a bit too overkill. Step number seven is sculpting them as a group. Now we have all the different elements creating our low end, but what we want is group them up. I like to actually introduce a bit of saturation or distortion to begin with. The main idea is bring that additional harmonics to match sound together. And then I'm gonna use a glue compressor. We're gonna make it really slow and smooth. Kind of creates this pumping feel a bit on the low end, a signature in this style. I'm gonna also use a channel EQ, create the EQ curve, making it even more glued together. You shouldn't forget that actually using also effects on the toms are very possible. Could be anything that you like. That's the first one with the hybrid reverb, and I want this duck vibe. Whole Reverbs are good for that. With the reverb, you should be very careful and not overdo to make everything even more mushy. So you can exaggerate it to here better. Something like this. Again, I want it very subtle. Together. The fun part begins when you play with the delays, especially this high tom and the delay could be extremely entertaining. I have my echo here. I'm gonna stand that to there. And I'm just gonna solo that. Problem here is you don't oftentimes want to have the delay in every single hit. You see, especially here, the double hit doesn't make sense. Hence, rather than keeping this always on, you can actually automate this. Better way of doing it is really putting a utility here. I want to hear, for example, here maybe a little bit. Maybe something like a ping pong. Just around here, like. somewhere around here as well, maybe longer this time. We can even introduce a bit of reverb here. This makes everything a bit more interesting. And finally, on the cutting could be a parallel processing. I would probably not consider it because it's already like full of things. Just to show you how you can do it is just you create a return channel. If I listen to this, 
maybe we can add a bit of definition on the middle area bring in eq and i'm gonna bring in like heavy saturation we can use overdrive and then we can probably kind of send the kick and the toms here three of them let's solo this part now i may use a bit of this area right we will bring it in slightly until we are satisfied without it change is small because i'm already kind of satisfied with the loop i don't want to overdo it you can also kind of introduce a bit extra sizzling if you want if you use a bit reverb on top and so on and final tip here and step number 10 will be just sit down now and try to mix everything a bit more if you haven't seen it i have a start to finish drum mixing tutorial i will put it here take a look at that but i will quickly mix this one now a bit of mixing the one important thing that we actually forget is just searching the or low tom to the kick because it may happen that here maybe tail a bit too long so that the kick hits without the tail and a bit here, here and there some eq we have something like this Like mentioned earlier, if you want to dive a bit deep into the drum mixing, I have a full start to finish drum mixing tutorial right here. You can take a look at that as well. 